Hi everyone, welcome back to the part 3 of this uh, tutorial on empirical formula. Uh, in this question, it is similar to the previous uh, tutorial, the question that we saw in the previous tutorial, uh, but there's a little part which is attached at the end of the question, which is uh, the question would give you the molar mass of the actual molecule. So when you learn about the empirical formula, you will learn uh, what is the empirical formula and what is the uh, what is the what is the molecular formula? So the empirical formula is the uh, the simplest formula. So if you have something like glucose C6H12O6, uh, you can reduce the chemical chemical formula to CH2O. Uh, now it doesn't mean that glucose is CH2O. It just means that the uh, simplest chemical formula is CH2O. Uh, in order to find out the actual molecule, we will need to have the molar mass of the actual molecule to determine what is the, uh, what is the, uh, uh, the actual uh, molecular formula. So one thing I want you to understand is that when we change from uh, when we change between empirical formula and molecular formula, uh, when we reduce it, the molar mass is also being reduced because you uh, because from the formula we are seeing a decreasing number of each uh, element. So we would also see a re reduction of the molar mass. So we are going to use the relationship between the between the two molar masses and to find out what would be the molecular formula. So. Uh, we have these two uh, information, the two masses of, uh, the, of these two elements, nitrogen and oxygen. So let me go through this very quickly since we saw a similar type of problem in the previous tutorial. Um, so I hope you can uh, follow. So again, first we are going to change the mass to the uh, quantity in terms of moles. So we're going to use the molar mass. And uh, let me use my calculator to find it out. 1.52 divided by 14, we have 0 0.189 moles of nitrogen. Okay? And then we are going to do the same for the oxygen, which will be 1 mole of oxygen. Uh, 16 grams of oxygen, which would give you okay, 3.47 divided by 16, we will have 0.217 mole of oxygen. And then we're going to divide by the smallest number, which is going to be this number. So this is going to be 1, so we will have 1 nitrogen, and uh, if I put this in the calculator, it would give you a number which is very close to, which is very close to 2. The number that you will get from your calculator is going to be 1.99, so uh, we will round that up to 2 because it's very, very close to 2. Unlike the previous problem, we have 1.5, this is pretty large to round, so here we just have uh, uh, 1.99 is very reasonable to round it to 2. So we have 1 nitrogen and 2 oxygen. So the empirical formula is NO2. So this is the empirical formula. And uh, the information given right here is that the molar mass of the actual molecule is between somewhere 90, between 90 to 95 grams per mole. So what we will do right here is that we will make use of the relationship of the molar mass of the empirical formula and the molar mass of the actual molecular formula and uh, we will find out what is the actual molecule what is the actual molecule, what is the molecular formula so first we have to determine the molar mass of this uh, empirical formula so nitrogen we have 14 grams per mole and then we have 2 oxygen 
So if we calculate this, we would have, so 14 plus 2 times 16, we have 46 grams per mole. So what we need to do is to do a little bit of mental math. So think about this. Uh, when, we do, when we talk about the uh, reduction from the actual molecular formula to the empirical formula, we are dividing by a whole number. So if we want to go back from the, uh, so going back from the empirical formula to the actual molecular formula, we would have to multiply by a whole number. So in this case, we would need to think about what whole number, what integer do we need uh, do, are we going to use to, uh, to, to multiply with this 46 grams per mole. So when we look at this range, 90 to 95, and then uh, and the, you know, the molar mass of the empirical formula, 46 grams per mole, so we will have a pretty good sense that, well, we can multiply this number by 2, which is going to be 92. And that would fall into right in this range of the, uh, right in this range of the molar mass. So, so we can, so what we need to do is that, okay, just need to prove it. So 46 grams per mole times 2, okay, 46 grams per mole times 2 is going to be 92 grams per mole. All right, and, uh, and we just, again, right in this range. So we can say that we are going to multiply the subscript Okay, we are going to multiply the subscript of these two elements by two. So the actual, the actual molecular formula for this compound is going to be N2O4. We multiply, we multiply the subscript by two. Okay, so let's do a recap for this problem. So at first, we are given the two masses of the two elements, nitrogen and oxygen. And what we do here is that first we convert it to the, uh, to the quantity in, the, in terms of moles, and then we divide by the smallest number so that we know what's the ratio between the, uh, between the two elements. And so we get NO2 first. That's the empirical formula. And then, we are going to find out the molar mass and we will try to see the relationship between the molar mass of the empirical formula and the molar mass of the, uh, of the actual molecule, uh, the molar mass of the actual molecular formula. And we find out that, well, if we multiply this number by 2, that would fall into this range. And so, because we multiply this number by 2, we would multiply the subscript, the subscript here, by 2 to get the actual molecular formula. And uh, this is how we approach this kind of problem. This is how we relate the uh, empirical formula and the molecular formula together.